Houston Dynamo, Portland Timbers, Sporting Kansas, Los Angeles Galaxy, Beach Pass, Toronto FC, Salt Lake, Chicago Fire, Columbus Crew, FC Dallas, New York Red Bulls, Pitch Pass, your all-access credential to the people that matter in MLS. Here's your host, Greg Roach. Hello, welcome to Pitch Pass. Yes, my name is Roach, and yes, I am a little more muted as we are in the hotel lobbies for this edition of Pitch Pass. We are bouncing around the Disney Pro Soccer Classic and talking with some of the teams, some of the guys and the teams that are playing at Pitch Pass. If you ever want to follow us on Twitter, pitchpass.com for everything on the show. Will Trap will join us a little bit later on in the show. Columbus Crews will trap, but we kick off the show with Sporting Kansas City. And one of the guys expected to completely break out this year, if he didn't already break out last year, Dom Dwyer joins us right now. Dom, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Well, I mean, we can't beat this weather, can we? I don't know. Not at not It's beautiful. I mean, I'm from D.C. You're obviously living in Kansas City. We're both chomping a bit to get back to those areas this time of year, right? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So you guys are MLS Cup champions. Yes. You're the first sporting guy that I've talked to since you guys won. So the question I have to ask is, and I'm not sure how into hockey you are, but the hockey players get a night with the cup. Do you guys get a night with the cup? Um, we do not. What? Um, I know. A lot of people had a night with the cup, but <laughs> we haven't. Um, you know, it's, it was pretty cool, um, obviously, that night to lift it and that stuff, and then kind of disappeared from there on, and it was doing all kinds of appearances and bouncing around everywhere, so we haven't really seen it since then. I feel like you guys should start the tradition. You guys get the cup for the year, right? Well, you have it forever, but you get the, the cup, cup. I think so. I think so. I don't really know, to be honest. Maybe you should, uh, you know, take it yeah. take it out for a spin, take a couple pictures. I know you're big on, on Instagram and, and putting your videos together. Maybe a night out with the cup yeah, would be cool. I think that would be a cool move. <laughs> that would be a cool move. Speaking of the Instagram, you guys, uh, I saw you were out with a couple of the guys uh, doing the amusement park thing. Mm -hmm. Who won the competition? Um, Cause me, it was it was what well, was it was basketball you were shooting yeah basketball actually I lost the basketball I'm not gonna lie okay um, CJ and Jake won the basketball and then uh, I won the go karting and we did that a few times and but it's more it's more fun we're more of uh, we all kind of slow down a bit for each other and just kind of want to crash and bump and that kind of stuff so it was pretty cool who had the fastest car though was he, was My you, car was fastest, yeah. Okay, because well, here's the thing, because that was kind of a loaded question, because you could have had the fastest car, which means it was slam dunk that you would have won. If you had handled the car the best, didn't matter how fast it was. Well, I think that's what it was. I think they were all the same, but I think I was just a better You would have been a driver. Yeah, the Lewis yeah. Hamilton thing going yeah, on. It was, yeah, you felt you it. You felt yeah. it. Did you, uh, did you feel like a tour guide down here, like just showing everybody around since you, she, you did some time in Orlando? Um, not really. I mean, most of the guys have, have been here because we've been here three years in a row now, mm -hmm. so... Um, you know, most of the guys know their way around, and um, it was pretty good. I got to see a few friends from college and that kind of stuff. So it was, it was nice. I always loved being in Florida. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you about your time in Orlando. When you first found out that you were going to be loaned to Orlando City, um, you know, net looking back and how well it worked out and, and how it kind of really introduced you to the, to the scene in, for Orlando City and also in MLS, uh, but looking back at the time, how did you look at that situation? Um, you know, at first I wasn't happy. Um, obviously, I didn't want to go. I wanted to be in KC. Yeah. I wanted to be playing at the highest level. Um, and, you know, I kind of went away and realized that it, wasn't, it was a good opportunity for me. And it was something where I got to prove myself and get to be playing. Um, and it was, you know, it turned out to be the right thing for me and exactly what I needed. Um, and obviously, I went down there with the right attitude and was very positive and, you know, just, just made sure that I worked hard and, you know, didn't think it would come easy. And I, um, you know, I definitely got hard and I definitely, you know, got rewards from that. What, at what point of during the process did, did you finally go, oh, wait a second, this, this is kind of where I need to be right now and this is, this is actually working for me? I think after I arrived in Orlando and I saw, you know, how, how good of a setup they had and, you know, how organized they were, the coaches were great, you know, all the guys welcomed me in. Um, it, it was very surprising, you know, it's not what I expected and it was... Um, you know, it was something that was amazing to be a part of. And, you know, I was I was very happy to be there and, and be involved with all the guys. And, you know, it was a great group there. Um, and, you know, they definitely, we definitely had a fun year. That's yeah. For sure, yeah. And, and it, it obviously wasn't a surprise to you when they ended up being awarded the franchise. The supporters must, I mean, just looking at your Twitter feed during the entire time you were down here, it, it really felt like you were embraced by the supporters as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they... You know, they 
they were so good to me um, since I've been there. And the funny thing is, they still are now. You know, they. Yeah. Um, Orlando had for this game. year at least. Yeah, for this year at least. Yeah, <laughs> next year we'll see. But this year, you know, they they came down to the games and, you know, they they stayed um, for our game that was after the Orlando game and they were cheering me on and they all had T-shirts with my name on and all sorts and they were saying some funny comments. So it was, um, you know, it's really nice and it's, um, you know, it's cool that they they remember you and it's not just that one year thing. You know, they really. They really um, embraced me, and it, it's great. It's a good feeling. What was it like for you when you found out that Orlando was getting an MLS franchise? Um, I kind of expected it, um, and I because you were here on the ground. You were yeah. here on the ground when it all was going down, and they were pushing for it. Yeah, yeah. And I talked to all the guys in the in the offices and stuff, and they were they seemed pretty confident it was going to happen. Um, and you know, I kind of knew before the announcement that 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 it was going to go through. Um, so that was a pretty cool thing. But it was something that I definitely expected. You know, there. They're so ready to, to be an MLS team. You know, everything was set up right from from the coaches to the players. You know, everything is is there. The fan base is now mm -hmm. there. You know, the 21,000 at a USL game is ridiculous. I mean, it was it's it's definitely a club that's ready to go MLS. What can the a fan of MLS expect from Orlando City when they come in? Like the, the supporters experience, you figure uh, I'm from D.C. So when D.C. United comes down here, what can the guy who's coming down to watch DC United play Orlando City expect when they get here? Um, I mean, obviously you have everything that Orlando has to offer with, you know, Disney and all that kind of stuff and Universal, the theme parks. You can make a weekend of it. And then obviously there's there's the game too and they're going to have a, a nice, beautiful stadium. Um, it's going to be a... It's going to be something amazing, you know. The weather down here is is ridiculous. So depending on what time of the year you well, come, that's a thing, right? If you might we're get, here in you July, you might get a bit of a storm, or you <laughs> might get, you know, you might get beautiful sunshine. So it's definitely going to be hot, but um, you know, it's definitely something that that people should should experience, and I think they'll have a lot of fun doing it. Whenever I come to Disney, I, you know, obviously you, you figure a lot of people from all parts of the world will be here. Um, is it more international than like so you as as an Englishman? When you come to Orlando, did you know about Orlando growing up just because of the, the Disney factor? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I came here when I was nine years old mm -hmm. for the first time. And then I came again when I was about 15. Um, and then obviously I moved to America when I was 18 for college. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just, I hear a lot of English accents when I'm here now. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of English people around and tourists and that kind of stuff. So it's, um, yeah, I'd definitely say it's a, it's a cultural place. After the season ended, I'm not saying there were rumors, but there was rumblings that you were going to explore some opportunities overseas. How close were you to taking advantage of those opportunities? Um, well, I was never going to leave. Um, I'm not really sure how that one came out. You know, I was still under contract to Kansas yeah. City, so they, before I left, they picked up my option, so I knew I was here next year. Um, and I was just, I was just trying for a loan. Um, you know, get some games while we we're in preseason. And I'd miss a bit of preseason and kind of experience different football. And it's something that I wanted to do, you know, I always wanted to play in England. So, um, you know, I wanted to go on loan and I was training with a few clubs. I was at Charlton Athletic and it looked like the loan was going to happen. And then, um, you know, someone came in and bought the club and there was a takeover. So then things were delayed a bit. And unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to, you know, wait around. And I'd be missing preseason and I hadn't signed yet on loan officially. So I'd only been on loan until this time right now in March yeah. so I wouldn't I wouldn't have missed any games but um, you know it was something that I really wanted to do but unfortunately it didn't happen but um, there was never a point where I was going to leave the club where are you at now with your 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 progress in the season and I'm, I'm asking specifically what do you think you need to do to take the next step which probably would hold down a, a full-time spot in the starting 11 um, I think just stay consistent um, you know I'm I'm very hungry to win and to score goals, and you know, I'm, I've been I've been working hard this off season, and I'm saying I'm the fittest I've ever been. Um, I feel great right now. You know, I feel like I'm fitting in well with the guys. You know, we have a we're starting to get a connection when we play, and everything seems to kind of come in together. You know, I didn't score many goals in the start of preseason, had a few injuries, and then scored a couple last game, and you know, they'll score some more tonight. And you know, it's just a it's just a fun thing to be you know be involved in and. It's growing, and I think it's going to be a it's going to be a big season. It's, I'm just you know I just want to score goals and and win games, and um, you know they, those things come together. I'm looking forward to tonight because a lot of the things that I've been reading about sporting is that you guys are on another level 
fitness wise or at least where you are in your progression uh maybe it's because the champions league that you guys have coming up you you guys want to hit the ground running on that uh have you felt that when you guys have been playing other teams have you felt oh wait a second peters have really been pushing us hard and now we're seeing it on the field absolutely um you know a lot at the end of most games we're you know we're normally that team that's that's still pushing and still driving at the end of games um he definitely demands a different fitness level than most teams do he uh he pushes us pretty hard and you know obviously it pays off um the way we play we press hard everyone knows that and um you know we're a fit team and and guys have to be prepared to come in fit you know the first day we get a fitness test to see how fit we are when we come in at the start of preseason so um you know obviously they'll if you're not where they want you to be at the start then they'll push you and by this time now then you'll be where they want you to be so it's good <laughs> i keep getting thrown off because you keep saying fit and then i always go to the British slang version of fit and I'm like oh there's a lot of good looking guys on the team is that what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that one but we, now we have a good looking side good looking it's side. true it's true and I want to I want to ask you about that in a second but this is a rare opportunity to get you on a game day it's a preseason game but this is a game day so take us through what your usual day of a game routine is like um in Kansas City or if yeah I was here? in Kansas City um Normally I'd get up, I'd go We to wouldn't the, be talking if this were a regular no, season game. <laughs> that's true, that's true. So we, um, I'd get up, I'd go to a hotel, which is right by my house, which one I'm, I'm good friends with the owner, and I have breakfast there, and kind of relax, and then I'll go home. Like a continental breakfast? You're pretty much. With the other, the other, the other yep. tourists? <laughs> yeah, and there's a, f a few other guys on the team, that we all meet down there, and have breakfast, and I'll come home and relax, and just kind of hydrate all day, and keep my feet up and watch the football on TV and watch some English Premier League games and then come back have some lunch and then just get prepared for the game go get my car washed and then head up to the stadium <laughs> <laughs> pretty much the same so we we talk about here in the states the people on the west coast kind of have it good as far as their American football is concerned because they get it from the crack of dawn until they go to bed at night you've grown up in a culture where you've seen your English league games at a certain time. How is it watching, turning it on at seven o'clock in the morning and, and seeing live football? Yeah, it is weird. Um, it's definitely a challenge when as, I'm a big Liverpool fan, so when Liverpool play early, you know, 6.30. I'm, you roll your eyes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that, you know, Peter's Peter not happy that I'm, I'll be awake that early, but you know, I definitely will wake myself up and watch the game and then go straight back to sleep too and um, <laughs> I actually live with me and Suni live together um, and uh, you know he's a Liverpool fan too so we always get up and we'll watch the game and then I'll end up falling back asleep or something and then just chilling out and then going for breakfast <laughs> after that but we won't tell Peter that. So you mentioned that you live with Suni and you guys are pretty much direct competition for place. What is that like that dynamic especially being as close to friends as you are when it at the end of the day it is a professional competitive environment yeah I mean it's it's a good thing I think you know me and Suni we're kind of different positions he's more of a winger I'd say mm -hmm. and I'm more of you know seen as a centre forward um, but you know it's obviously we, we're, we're both so competitive when we play PlayStation and stuff like that together you know we Xbox whatever we we crush each other and um, you know, it's definitely definitely gets very competitive, but no, it's it's all in good nature, and I think it's it's good to have that kind of you know friendship where you can push each other, and you yeah. know you still want the best for each other, yet you're still in direct competition. So it's, yeah, and that's it's the thing cool you're thing you're rooting have. for him to do well, but yet you're also like okay, I I still have to do well. Exactly, exactly. So the last thing, we mentioned the uh, the fitness and not the stamina of the team. <laughs> when we're out. Is the accent the deal closer for you? Yeah. I mean, it's got to be. Yeah. Especially in Kansas City. Sometimes it's not fun, though, because it, it makes it a little bit too easy with the accent. <laughs> <laughs> so you're out with the guys. Everybody's hanging out. You walk up. The accent is the... That's, that's your icebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. But, so it is too easy, almost. Yeah, because, I mean, it's... Have you ever tried to do the American accent? I have. Just, just to make it hard on yourself. I have tried, but... I mean, it's they. A lot of people kind of start to notice you around Kansas City. So if you, if I start putting on an American accent, they'll be like, "Wait, are you English?" And then okay, they so kind of figure it out. We got a Columbus road trip coming up. We're out night after the match. Give me the American accent. Cool. Let's just see if you can okay, do it. Okay. I always sound strange when I do it. <laughs> um, 
Am I talking to a girl right now? Yeah, you're just okay, talking to talking a girl. About. Visualize it in your mind. It's, it's really challenging for me. It's really challenging. <laughs> um, I can't... I can only okay, do can it, like, if I'm, like, talking to the guys. I've never, like... I can't say I've talked to a girl about it. So like, you haven't even tried to challenge yourself. I have, but I always say, like, It's like hey, working man, on your weak hey, foot. Hey, bro. Hey, man. <laughs> and so... I, I'd always say that. I don't know if you say it to a girl. Hey, man. Hey, bro. Do you have a backstory though? Like, so when they when they hear you the first time, do they go, "Wait, where where are you from?" Do you yeah. have a, a, a American city that you go, "Okay, this this is where I could pass for being somewhere from. like Nebraska or like okay somewhere that's not so too Midwest. far away." Yeah, so Midwest, you yeah. could you could. Or, yeah. or I'll say like Texas, and then I'll start putting on like you could twang it because you could, yeah. yeah, you could easily twang that up. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, it's easier to do. Yeah, it's, it was a horrible accent. The hey man, by the way, I don't, yeah, I don't I know, know how that's gonna bad. work. His man, dude, or bro, like any of those words, <laughs> I just try and use and make them sound American. What about sweetheart? Can you do sweetheart? Sweetheart. sweetheart. Yeah, you could do Texas. Yeah, let's just stick with Texas. Yeah, stick with Texas. Yeah. Dom Dwyer, good luck this season, my friend. Thanks for taking some time to talk with us. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Dom Dwyer, he actually be in action tonight, as we alluded to earlier. They'll be playing in the Disney Pro Soccer Classic versus Columbus Crew. You'll know the results, but as we record, we don't know the results. And the team they are playing is the team that our next guest plays for. He is Will Trapp, and he joins us right now on Pitch Pass. Will, how are you? I'm great, Greg. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm a little nervous now for the rest of our conversation. I saw what you did to the kids. Oh, uh, come on. I was being some, nice. There's some kids over here uh, making a little bit of noise. When I say kids, I don't mean like teenagers like they were like three years old and you went over there and said hey you know i was just i was off just, my lawn i'm just letting them know like we got something going on here a little interview you gotta take it's it a easy. professional you thing know? going exactly. on here and i exactly. need to uh i need to concentrate <laughs> <laughs> so uh how are things going for you in, in this preseason uh, everything's going really 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 well um obviously new coach lots of new players here with the crew but um i'm excited for for the sophomore season i guess you could yeah. call it for me um but yeah it's been wonderful i mean here in sunny florida and can't get enough of the sun. No, it, it, but and I do have a question for you, and maybe it's just when you guys get to Florida. But uh, I saw you tweet you were you did Medieval Times again. Yeah, we uh, had Grunenbaum on last year, no longer with the team, but he was on last year. Sure. Pictures from that Medieval Times experience came out. What's up with the crew and Medieval Times? I think we just got a, a lot of guys who who love that era of like, <laughs> <laughs> of, of culture. It's it's really? kind of bizarre. Uh, I mean, I found myself watching. I mean, we're all into Game of Thrones. Of course, that kind of, stuff. of course. So uh, it transitions well because we had I think like five or six guys like running mm -hmm. through the the full series on HBO Go. Yeah. Uh, this this trip, um, I wasn't I wasn't part of it last year, but. I heard how much fun they had. It had to be a part of it this, and this year. year. I mean, we had 46 <laughs> guys going out there. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Wait, how many guys? 46. <laughs> 46 of us. Uh, now, did that mean that you have to divvy up which night you're going for? or Because you can't all be in one section with no, 46. I mean, no, um, we all represented our the same country. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we had the, the full 30-man squad uh, plus all, all the technical staff okay. and coaches. So, um, Were you able to wrap in your uh, rookie initiations? at medieval times or did we do that off-site uh, it was off-site okay uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't tied in with the same thing mm -hmm. uh, the rookies did a fantastic job yesterday though it was what did what did you make them do uh i mean so we had them all come up one by one introduce themselves yes yeah. uh we did some awkward like what's your college stats whatever stuff yeah. like that and then something special about yourself um if they had any sisters there was a lot of whistling going on <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's the what's the what player had the most special thing that you that stuck with you uh i would say steve clark probably had the most memorable and what was his special thing um so when he was in college he got kicked out of his his apartment and had mm -hmm. to live in a tent on campus for uh, <laughs> for a couple months that's so pretty he, special he's pretty notorious around <laughs> oakland for, uh, for that it's pretty special yeah now i remember when i was a fraternity the guys who were hardest on the pledges aka the rookies were the people who had just pledged because it was like, I went through it. Now I'm going to really go over the top. And sure. Are you that guy? <laughs> Being that you just went through it yourself. Well, the funny thing is, we didn't have to do anything last year. So, uh, this is completely new territory. Uh, so, I'm sure next year, these rookies are going to be hard on the guys. But uh, So, wait a second. You didn't have to do anything. Nah, yet, nothing. you gladly participated oh, all about in it. what we did. All about it. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, I who yeah, it's kind of yeah. it's a slippery slope Whoa. a little bit, but you know. So you paid no dues, nope. yet you were able. 
Okay, uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about the Netherlands and your time over there. Uh, I'm a huge Dutch soccer fan. I, I'm, am I allowed to say this? I think I I noticed your uh, did your you notice that? Okay, yeah. so what did you notice? I mean the the lion from yes. the Netherlands. Well, so and then you didn't you didn't even didn't notice that, that one. I didn't that's, see that that's, accent, that's my eye axe. So I noticed that one. For so you sure. know, by the way, very perceptive. Yeah. I like that. I like how aware you are. Yeah. Your detective skills are honed. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So. I am fascinated about your time over there. So mm-hmm. let me ask you in, in the context of this. I know I know your coach, Greg Barhalter, spent some time over there. Um, a lot of people say that his style is more of a modern coaching style. He used a lot sure. of analytics and things like that. Did you notice anything over there that now you're here under his tutelage that you go, oh, okay, I see he got something from there and brought it back over here? Yeah, I mean, I think several drills that I did when I was when I was at Peck's in uh, in the Netherlands that we do here every day in mm-hmm. training um, and it's funny because when I was there I was talking I was like oh I like this I like that and he's like you're gonna see tons and tons of this when we get back and nice. start the start the season so so he was over there with you no but oh, you, you I was stayed in contact yeah, communicating with, yeah. while I was there um, but yeah it's been it's been great to see um, that transition and the the um, I don't know some of the highlights of things that I really enjoyed there coming back here as well who'd you see them play when you were over there uh they played heronveen and i watched them play um eagles which is their like big rivalry yeah. game um and they ended up losing to eagles which wasn't good and then they lost to heronveen as well at home so and that's uh van bastion's coaching yes Herenveen. yeah so i got to see him coach and uh uh it was it was a little <laughs> disappointing but they played well got uh, to see him coach hey, yeah you know, i got great. to see yeah, him stand on that sideline yeah. and point sure, it, sure, sure. it was a thrill probably it was great for yeah i loved it it was, my, it was the, the highlight of the trip for sure <laughs> so now that you're here uh, i'm wondering last year rookie nerves or first year first year professional nerves this year heightened expectations um, you wore the armband uh, already in this preseason. Yep. What do you, where do you get more butterflies? Was it last season as your first professional experience or this year where there was a lot of buzz about you, not just in Columbus, but at league wide. Sure. So where do you feel the more, more of the nerves came from? Uh, I think last year there were more nerves just because you're, you're in uncharted territory yeah. and unsettled a little bit. And um, this year I've been through that. I've had that, those experiences and now I can, can kind of come into my own um mm-hmm. with a little more confidence and a little bit more um i don't know bravery i guess yeah. is a good word um but yeah there are ex- expectations but i don't try to read too much into those i mean people are gonna always say whatever they want in the media and, and hype things up but so you didn't um, read anything about how you're one of the top 10 national team pr- pr- yeah, prospects I, I for the next it, for like, sure. so you didn't see it okay so you saw that i did i did but you put it aside yeah i mean i think those things will happen if they're if they're meant to happen and i'm gonna just take what's in front of me and and work to get better every day okay i'll be at the match tonight okay there's still uh, as a, as the last i've been reading some speculation of where you'll be deployed in midfield will i get a preview tonight of where we can maybe see you line up next week uh against dc united yeah, I think uh, the way and the style that Greg's put out there the, the past few games where I've played is is where he sees me playing throughout the season. Which is um, where? Uh, defensive midfield role. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I guess it, it's a great preview for what's what's to come uh, next week against DC United and then throughout the season. So you look at you look at defensive midfield, and going back to the the next cycle of World Cup kind of conversation. Sure. A lot of guys looking at that spot a lot of a lot of competition for that place what do you see you need to do to differentiate yourself from from guys like that i mean first and foremost you got guys like michael bradley jermaine jones who yeah are, who are a long time and you figure bradley will be around for, for the next sure, cycle for sure so that's i mean that's huge competition as a dc um, guy i throw out perry kitchen to you <laughs> yeah, just as a, you know just course. throwing names out you know yeah but i mean in the in the mix at the moment yeah um so I think, I mean, you, I can always work on uh, defensive capabilities because mm-hmm. when you get against the top players in the world, it gets even harder. Um, communication, that's a huge thing for that, for that role because it's a leadership kind of in the center of the team. Um, I mean, passing can always get better and distribution, playing longer passes, shorter passes, mixing it up um, and looking to play forward more. And I guess going back to what you're saying about last year versus this year, you having that confidence of, of being – on the field, knowing what it takes to, to compete at this level, that makes it a little easier for you to be more of a, I don't want to say general, but a director and, and dictating where, where the attack's going to yeah, start. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Were you over there when they were getting ready for speed skating? I'm talking about the Netherlands again. Uh, 
Like, I'm was sure. there a buzz? There was a little bit. I didn't I, see. I had no idea. I was because you watch the Olympics. Yeah, right? I wasn't that big on there. Like, I didn't know their culture too too like well. You didn't know it was going to be what it well, was. Well, I didn't know speed skating was like the second the thing. Yeah, yeah. like the second highest sport. In yeah, the, in their in the country. So, uh, I. I got picked up from the airport and I was like, oh, so what's like, what yeah. else is there to do in the Netherlands yeah. other than play football? And they're like, oh, speed skating is huge. I was like, really? Okay, whatever. What? Yeah, you're like, all right, <laughs> That sounds down. cool. Uh, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> and then I watched the Olympics. I'm like, holy crap, this is, this is a real deal. Were you able to say to your friends and family before it started, hey, heads up. Yeah. We'll keep around the Dutch for the speed skating. I, I mean, mean, I don't want to. I don't want to break it down or anything. But <laughs> those those guys are going to be the hardcore ones. I think after I saw the first couple medals come their way, I was like, "Oh, guys, what? Like, look out!" I know sweeping really, podiums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was well, like, "Ah, oh, they're they're pretty good over there." But when you're when they're sweeping podiums and then you say they're pretty good, then it's like, "Yeah, okay, we get it. We're watching it." If you I think it was back I think over, it was the first time though. It might have been like the first one, <laughs> the first medals they got, and then after that, and then they got like what twenty three medals. Yeah, or like, like that. they like the, I think the only medals they got were in speed skating. Yeah, it so, was. What, uh, did you pick up any Dutch? A little bit. I mean, just the bare essentials when it comes to playing in the games. Right, left, yeah. turn, pass back, stuff like that. But let me ask you, because you always hear about guys when they want to, they want to go overseas. They're always thinking about England. Mm-hmm. Having a taste of what it was like from, from a Dutch football point of view, did that make you think to yourself, hey, if, if the opportunity arise, that that'd be a league I would like to go and, and try my hand at? Most definitely. Um, I mean, I was watching, they had games on all the time yeah. there. Um, and you watch, obviously, the top clubs, Ajax, Feyenoord, um, AZ Alkmaar, all mm-hmm. those guys. Um, but then, I mean, you look at Pex Wool, the team I was at, I mean, they played wonderful football. And, it, and you can definitely see how players can develop a, a higher soccer IQ yeah. is, a, is a good way to put it. Um, and that's kind of the way I play. So I would fit perfectly into their style. So, I mean, obviously most of the money and glamour yes. is in England. Of course. But, I mean, I think at a younger age, develop, development's the biggest thing. And uh, that's definitely a league where you're going to, you're going to grow and prosper. We had Dom Dwyer on earlier today and uh, I didn't ask him this because, you know, he said his, it's his dream to play overseas, but being that he's from there, sure. that makes sense. But what we're seeing now with, with Bradley and Dempsey coming back and Maurice Adu now back in the league. And the thing that I've always thought, I was consider myself an MLS snob. Okay. The reverse of the Euro snob. Yeah. So thinking about DP contracts and the kind of money that you are now seeing Americans getting mm-hmm. to play in MLS, does that affect your thinking as far as, oh, I want to play overseas? And I guess another way to look at it would be, do you want to play overseas because of the opportunities available or because it is still overseas, quote unquote? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. And I think these guys coming back, Michael Parker's here at Columbus. There's another one, example. yeah. Um, I mean, I think I'd be naive not to think that the MLS is is a definitely a destination point now versus yeah. it used to just kind of be like the – and. Um, just a stop here. On yeah, the, you either the, started the, here or you path. ended here. For yeah. sure, for sure. So um, I, mean, I think ever since I was a young kid watching games, EPL games on, on TV and, and Champions League, yeah. it's, it's always been a dream, um, but dreams can change. So yeah. you never know. Uh, Six and a half million dollars a yeah. year is, <laughs> yeah. and I think that's the thing that I, I kind of am interested to see what happens as far as the next evolution and one you'll be a part of mm-hmm. because you'll be coming up in there and it's, okay, I always wanted to play overseas, but my chance to make more money here in the States and also remain in the States, does that trump the boyhood dream of being on the big stage in, in England? Sure. Um, I mean, that'll be interesting. Yeah, that'll be, I, I mean, I it's not really a question. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, a, okay, it's a bridge we'll cross when you get there. I it's guess. something that the last generation of players never had to think about, sure. but it could be at the point where, where you might have to think about it. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, anytime you're around your family, it's, I mean, I'm spoiled. I live in Columbus. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's there, perfect for you. It's, it's I mean, if I could live in Columbus and make six point five million dollars a year, I, <laughs> you'd be living pretty well. I wouldn't be. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't. It'd be hard to say no to that. Exactly. So before I let you go, um, I know it's been a long preseason. You guys start your matches next week. Yep. Um, the good thing about long preseasons, you get to catch up. You mentioned HBO Go and, and the Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. What are What have been the series that you have either gotten into or caught up on during this preseason? Well, we were lucky. I think. Maybe the day we left to come out here was uh, the release of House of Cards. Well, and that's I'm glad because that's the one I wanted to ask you about. Yeah. So no spoilers because I'm only three episodes okay. in to sex, second season. I won't ruin season. it for you, but... Did you start fresh this year or did you did you already watch it and were ready for season two? I had watched it last year okay. and I was all about it. Yeah. So I was like super you stoked knew, coming yeah. into it. Um, 
Yeah, and I crushed it out in like three days. I really? Think. Yeah, it was just one after another after another. So, um, what, now we're not, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody listening, but obviously episode one had the huge yeah. thing. Yeah. Does it maintain that, oh my God, throughout the season? That's, that's Okay, is the season good? Season's wonderful. Okay, it's, even it, taking that, that big spoiler thing yeah, out, yeah. it's still good. No, it's very, very good. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think it might even be better than the first season, but... I, if you take out the first the huge, part, yeah. but, I mean, you put that the first thing part takes in, it onto another yeah, level. level. Yeah, for sure, totally. Um, yeah, but Frank Underwood, man, he's ba- he's don't, a bad don't, man. Don't mess with That's him. All I'm saying, and you know what? Don't mess with Mrs. Underwood either. No, she's tough. she will also take you to the yeah. woodshed. Yeah. Okay, so that one. Anything else? You True Detective. I've, you got the HBO oh, Go thing. I'm all about that show. So man. you got True Detective. McConaughey's unbelievable. He's fantastic. Unbelievable. He's fantastic. And don't sleep on uh, Woody either. No. Woody, Woody's doing yeah, well. Yeah, he's doing all right. Especially with the ladies, he's getting. Yeah. I don't know how. He's a little sketchy. But... Yeah. It's, it's well, it's just weird that in in Boondock, Louisiana, there are so many hot chicks yeah, running around, I don't and, understand and it. he's the one that gets them all. Yeah, so no it's kind of crazy. No chance. All right. So what is on your to watch list then? Uh, I'm a big How I Met Your Mother fan. So that's, that's so winding I'm down. Just, I'm keeping up on that. Mm-hmm. Every Monday night, I'm all over it. Um, honestly, though, I'm like, I think I've watched every show on HBO <laughs> Go. Like, I'm kind of like a show addict. It's not. It's you went not back good. and watched The Wire already. Oh. See, I've seen the first season. So very, I'm on the second, but the second starts a little different. You well, know? I'm the like, second is, is a shock because yeah. you, you're used to being on the streets, yeah. the corners. Now you're at the so docks. I don't, yeah, so I don't know how I'm, I'm liking that too much. Stick with I, it. Yeah, that's what I've heard. You've got a lot of road trips coming up, sure. so make sure, sure you stick with it. All right. Now, I'm going to let you go because I see some kids running around on your lawn, and I know you want to I know you want to crack that <laughs> whip. So, Will Trap, thank you very much, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. show information, go to pitchpass.com.